Hello and welcome to another Discord tutorial. Well, it's like, it's partly a Solana tutorial, but today we're gonna write a Discord bot. Because remember that thing, that thing, that thing that we did like on June 12th, like three months ago? Yeah, we have this part. We just need this part now. Because people in my Discord, whoops, people in my Discord, they keep verifying. <laughs> they keep hitting verify and nothing happens. And we wanna change that. We wanna change that and we want the verify to actually do something. So today we're gonna write this part that we're still missing for our program that's already deployed, I think, at least on DevNet. So today we're gonna stay on DevNet but we just want to get the technology out there because then swapping to mainnet is going to be relatively simple. So, we just need a Discord bot. I mean, that can't be too hard. How to write a Discord bot. How to make a Discord bot in Python. What is Discord? We know that. What is a bot? Uh, we can assume that. How to make a Discord bot. Okay, I think I'm just going to go through this one. Okay, slowly. Well, semi-slowly. Creating a Discord account. I have that. Creating an application. An application allows you to interact with Discord's API to provide authentication tokens, designing permissions, and so on. To create a new select new application. Well, and where? Developer portal. There we go. Are you a game dev? Solandi verification. Yes, yes. I hope this is not sensitive information. <laughs> Bring your app to life on Discord with a bot user. Yes, I want a bot. Add bot. Yes, let's do it. A wild bot has appeared. Um, I don't know. What's a good username for a bot? And this little helper. Let's leave it like that. I'm not creative. Ooh. Um, I should not share this. For security purposes, can only be viewed once. Okay, we copy our token. I've saved it. Cool. I've saved my token and we don't show that part, but I've saved the token that was here. Okay, cool. Now what? Create a guild or server. Well, I have a server. Should we work on production? Of course we should. Of course we should just put it right in there. What could possibly go wrong? Adding it to a guild or server. So we authorize. Wait, I didn't pay attention. Where? Authorize and then what? Oh, here's the generator. Okay, cool. Bot. Bot. Do I want to give it administrator? Right? I mean, this is like... If somebody steals my token, it's probably not so good to let it have all the permissions. Maybe I should not do that. But yeah, I can give you all that shit. I don't like, it's not like you need that, but that you definitely need. Yes, 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 yes. Moderate members. Yes. Manage events. Yes. Read messages. Yes. Webhooks, of course. Emojis. Yeah. Nicknames. Change. Create. Band members. There I'm not so, like I don't, I don't want my bot to have to do this, so. You will neither ban nor kick members, my dear bot. You can tell me and I'll do it for you. Manage channels. Manage roles, we definitely need that. I don't think I want you to manage server. Manage channels, I also give you that because channels. So you can break a lot, but you can't break everything. Okay. Select copy. So we add this to, God damn it! I even have two, who the hell? I add it to my crypto server. Yes, I approve all of this, of course. Used in zero servers, what could possibly go wrong? Beep, beep, boop, boop. I'm a human. Easy. Ha, ah, that was really easy. Usually I fail at captures, but <laughs> there wasn't any. Okay, authorized. Sweet. We have an authorized bot now. And and now? 
go to your server and see that the bot has been added. Welcome. <laughs> Everyone, welcome to Lendy Verification. Now, how to actually make a bot? How to make a Discord bot in Python? Since we're learning, you'll be using discord.py. Discord.py is a Python library. Begin by installing discord.py with pip. Well, that seems easy. Let's just pip install discord.py. Sweet. Creating a Discord connection. The first step in implementing your bot is to create a connection to Discord with discord.py. You do this by creating an instance of a client. Okay, so now we just have some Python code. Woo, Python code. Should I get this from the environment? For now, I think I'll just read it from file. Close it again. Okay, we just read the token from file. And then we create a discord.client and then client.event on ready print has connected to discord. And then we run that. Let's try that again. What could possibly go wrong? Well, this, first of all, I think this Python runs on a different one than this Python. Yeah, so I mean, here we have a 395 and here we have a 3810. Oh, you didn't see that. I was looking down here. God damn it. Ah, God damn it. Ah, God damn it. <laughs> That's the right version. Anyway, point is um, now we have the correct version. But now what do you need? Can I now see that? Yeah, that's what you're talking about. Represents a client connection that connects to Discord. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So apparently this is a, a newer version than what is in this tutorial. But hey, I can't call myself a dev if I can't fix that. So, all. Ah, so, okay. So apparently here I say what I want to do. And I mean, I can't just say all because I only have certain privileges anyway. I'm just going to say all. Maybe that helps. Takes one argument, but two were given. What was it before? Missing one required keyword only argument. One required keyword only argument intents. Intents equals this. Is that what you need? And I call myself a Python developer. No, oh, man, intense parameter must be intent, not method. Uh, oh, that's the method. Ah, that's my issue. What if we leave that out and keep zero? Ah, there we go. Has connected to Discord. Ha, huh. nice. But we don't do anything, I guess. We have to continue here. Cool, we can print the name of ourselves. Cool, okay, nice. Cool, now what else can we do? So we have a client.guilds. I'm just gonna print myself that because that should just be one. Ugh, it's a sequence prox. Okay. Loop over the guilds and print guild.name. Great, so we have an empty String, amazing. So that's not working. I have an ID, not the name. Maybe because I don't have enough permissions in the intents. Guilds, flag value and int. Flag value dot flag, what is that? An int. <laughs> Great, oh, what, what amazing code this is. Oh, <laughs> look, but, now it can read LCN descriptor server. Okay, so we need to, <sighs> we need to add like all the flags that we need into the intents. Like if we want to read guilds, then we need the guilds flag in that. Okay, fine. Okay, but we made, we made this thing work. We made this thing work. Okay, slowly, slowly getting there. Moving on. So we have LCN descriptor server and the ID, perfect. 
This is gonna take longer than I expected. Actually, I just wanna read messages. How do I do that? I'm gonna quickly make this a bit more. My server ID and we're gonna find our server by ID. Then we don't need that loop also works perfect responding to events there we go that's maybe what we want to do i don't really want to read all of that i just want to see the code that seems to fit and then boom event on member join well that's already we could like already in the join tell them hey please register but really what i want is on message ah responding to messages there we go on message on message if the method message author is ourselves then we return that makes sense because otherwise we react to our own messages message.channel.send so let's say if my message was hi then my response is Hello, Andy. We await a message channel sent. So apparently that sends it back to the same channel that the message was sent in. Well, I mean, but which channel, uh, can I specify which channel? For now, let's not do that. Let's just print message content and see what comes back here. Okay, does it now read all the messages in my Discord? It certainly didn't read that. Oh, maybe because it doesn't have the right flags. <laughs> how do we, how would we do that? Is that like with an or? That's it. like if I was a computer scientist, then th that's how I would implement that. But I don't know if they are computer scientists. So we want something with like messages or DM messages or guild messages you think that will work oh I forgot okay yeah I mean I don't know what else I need to tell it Oh, but now it definitely printed a, an empty line. Not here. Yeah, look. There it definitely printed something, but not even message received was printed. That's weird. So run the verification bot. Uh huh. Because you don't have privileges. The moderator now. So it have not been explicitly enabled in the developer portal. Ah, you know what? We're gonna just go the other way around. We're not gonna make you a moderator, but we're gonna let my bot view this channel manage this channel and send messages this executes again no still not i took moderator privileges again okay so what is the problem here those things yeah i'm requesting something that i'm not supposed to request now which of those was it i don't care about the m messages but guild messages, message content, that's like important. But then I'm not sure if the or is the right thing to go here. Maybe I literally just request message content. Not even the guild itself. That's already a problem. Guild messages. Ah, 
messages is a problem. Okay, so let's just do guilds and guild messages. Yes, and in my bot messages, I say hi. Message received. Ah, we're getting there. Yo, <laughs> we are getting there. Okay, but guess we also need the message content flag and restart that client. Exceptional card. It doesn't know what message is. Ah, oh, look, typing works. Application author channel name. Message received in channel bot messages. So like, yeah, we are getting there. It's just the content that we don't get yet. That the content we can't read. Pretty sure it's a permissions thing. It probably is message content. But with message content, I can't start you. You're requesting privileges that have not been enabled. Ah, but there I see the list of intents. That's cool. So we know what that is. Nice. So yes, but that we need. So maybe I'm just missing that. Well, that was at a convenient time. Message content intent. Oh, maybe required your bot to receive message content in most messages. Well, yes. Maybe that's ch th those two. I didn't read them. Anyway, now that I have that, I can do it with message content enabled. Nice. But now. <laughs> we can read messages. Good. Good, good. I like. I like. Okay, okay. Now we can do stuff like if. Then we just make a list of channels. We'll need that later. But for now, if my message channel is my bot messages channel. Oh, wait, the ID. Then we're going to print it. And if the message content is high, we respond with hello Andy to the same channel. Let's try that. Let's send the message back. Ooh, exciting. Can we do this? Hi bot. Hello Andy. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. I like, I like, I like. And then another message received from ourselves. And that's exactly why we have this guard here to return. Such that we don't continuously say hi, 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 hi. We don't want that. Sweet. I like. We can receive and send messages. That's pretty much all we need from this bot. But what else do you have? In this tutorial, handling exceptions, ah, <laughs> exceptions just don't occur, right, right, right. In our graphic, we are here now. We can do this. We have the communication with the bot and got to check accounts and then set roles. And we have to somehow let the user create with a program. So this part we definitely don't do. But since this is still bot work, I wanted today do the role setting and I mean the account checking. Yeah, maybe if we get to it. Okay, because this, this is gonna be hard enough. This is gonna be hard enough, I guess. Not sure how well documented it is. Okay, so we stay in this channel and we do another one if the message is, yes, I know with bot commands, it would be so much cleaner, but Shut up, I do it my way. Gip. If you say gip, then we somehow need to say message author dot 
get role add roles what does that need manage roles to use this well, this is also interesting and the added roles must appear appear lower in the list of roles than the highest role of the member so let's do that let's fix that first my solandi because it only has this role it only has the solandi verification so the solandi verification currently is the lowest role so we need to pump that up that's why roly poly is also up there haha <laughs> that makes sense that's the one thing then the other thing is we need to have the what did you say permission manage roles maybe it's not an intent maybe the roles thing is not an intent we'll just try it without that yeah this is not a solana tutorial whatsoever but it's discord and you know maybe you want to build a discord bot at some point that will be printed if this doesn't throw roles reason <laughs> atomic probably means all or none reason well like a text why you got it maybe and then roles snowflake whatever snowflakes are abc snowflake an argument list of abc snowflake representing a role to give to a member fine roles let's check how well documented that is add role to someone ha ah, there we go stack overflow add role role and this is a discord role do i have my guild here if i had my guild get role role id id to search for ha <laughs> ha i'm just gonna save my guild because i don't want to always have to load it on the other hand i can always just execute that code i mean it doesn't really matter so let's just do a dev get role we find our guild we say guild get role with this id and we return create a role how about test verified copy id <laughs> uh, test verified role now let's do the role test verified okay and then roles role eh? i don't know <laughs> i don't know message received in solana help from some guy well no can't, no time for this now okay so potty pot keep Ah, gib error. <laughs> Ignoring exceptional message. Unexpected keyword roles. He does it add roles and then just roll. Okay. Let's roll with it. Gib. Oh. Still add roles got an unexpected role. That was the error in the beginning. Keep. <laughs> oh, here's your role. But runtime warning, member add role was never awaited. Uh, well, I mean, we can await it, but let's see if that worked. Ah no i don't know what that is keep none so that didn't give me anything back but uh oh the warning is gone so yeah and then oh oh i'm test verified now <laughs> look look here I'm test verified. 
Bam! My bot can give out rolls, yo! <laughs> we can distribute rolls. That's all we need to do as the bot, really. Now, the only thing that is left is like the verify and checking if a user should be verified. Okay. I mean, can't be so hard, right? We can do rolls. Isn't that great? We can do rolls. What else was there? So we can do that. We can receive messages. We can set roles. And we need to check for the account. Should we still do that? To make it at least a little bit of a Solana tutorial, I want to also do that. Because this would all be super easy if we were in TypeScript, but we are in Python. So we need to derive accounts in Python and get account info in Python. And I've never done that. I've never done any like Solana stuff in Python, I think. Is there a Python Solana Web3 library? Pip install Solana and then import Solana. And then we can have a client. Well, that seems simple enough. So we just import Solana. Let's do this. Let's do the simplest version of what that is possible. Examples, get account info. Ha 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 ha, there we go. There, my wallet account. Python, Solana, Python example. Ooh, look at that. We got a result with data, executable is false, Lamperts is that, owner is that, and data is empty. Cool, data is empty because obviously it's a wallet account, uh, just a system account. Well, that was easy. Now, how about deriving an account? Is that also so easy? Let's see, Solana client dot, Returns all accounts by a pro. Nope, that's not what we need. Maybe I should go to my source code. Where do we even have my source code? Discord verification bot. There we go. <laughs> June twelfth. Yeah, that green screen is like it's that the light is getting it's getting dark. But I do want to finish this. So anyway, in the tests, Discord verification. Somewhere we did this, right? So get the user account, find program address. That's the thing that we want to do. Do you have a find? Get, no. But maybe it's also not on the client. Can I here search, find? Oh, find program address. Yes, 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 yes. It's in public key, public key. Find program address. And then we just provide the seeds and the program ID. And it gives us a public key and the bump. That sounds great, but I don't look great anymore. So I'm going to turn the lights on and be yellow. I'm not even going to care about this now. Or do I care? Yes, I care a bit. Okay, fine. I do care. Fine. I care. We still have a little bit of daylight. That's why I'm still a little blue now, but here we go. Okay, find program address. And we get back the PDA and the bump. Let's open the IDL of this. And here somewhere we have our program address. Perfect, so we are already gonna make a pop key from this. And so we have the program ID and we need the Seeds. Seeds is just Discord plus UID encoded to little endian. How I get bytes from a string, I also don't know in Python. How about two bytes? <laughs> no, but like that's something that I should find easily, right? because Python UTF-8 means eight 
bits per character, right? That about makes sense. So if we only have ASCII characters, then we should only always have one character per byte. Because otherwise UTF-8 does something special, special, but the default is eight bits per character. So we get a byte list of length, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? I mean, we can print this. Yeah. Wow, even in B representation, cool stuff. Okay, I think that should be fine. Seeds is bytes and this needs a list of bytes. List of bytes, byte array. So it can be several of these. Well, that makes sense. And then, ah, okay, okay, okay. So I can be like seed one and then here be like seed one, seed two and so on. And then the program ID. I think this sounds about right. And then seed two is, and now we need to encode an, a big number also in bytes, but it's Python, Python, big int two bytes, dot two bytes. And byte order, we can say little, perfect. So we have an integer, user ID, discord, user ID, and just for fun, take my own one. And then we say discord user ID, two bytes. Oh, the length must, it's a fixed length. <laughs> How many bytes? Eight, I think. Okay, eight bytes. Little Indian and signed equals false. We want an unsigned integer of this encoded like this. Yeah, I mean, uh, getting somewhere. This is how we derive PDAs in Python. We're gonna not do that for a bit and we're gonna print our PDA. And that's a pub key, so let's go to base 58. Ah, oh, that's so nice. It's almost the same as in TypeScript. And we get this. Now, how do we verify that this is the same as what we have here? Maybe by using this, let's do that instead and see what comes up here, Sech. and then just <laughs> randomly go to the Explorer, be like, hey, definite, is there anything on that address? No, would have been too good. <laughs> if that would work first time, that would have been way too easy, right? Let's get the reference. The reference is what we have here. User count to base 58. That's our reference implementation. Reference, does it work or need, does it need the packages? Whoa. Hold my beer. That is the same address though. Whoa. But apparently we didn't sign up with that. Did we ever sign up with any? Is the program live? Program is alive but we don't have history for it because it's been too long. It's been too long of a while, but okay. I mean, I guess, I guess that's good with me. Like I seem to get the right ID cause this prints the same as this. I'm happy with that. We can find the program address. And then what do we need to do with it? Get account info on it, right? Get account info. 
on this thing and that will give us you know oh whoa 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 there is something there i it's a live account <laughs> yeah but why didn't the explorer tell me Explorer on DevNet, why didn't you see that? Why do you see that as zero? But if I request that there is actual data there. Wait, executable is true? Oh, I okay, I requested for the program because I'm an idiot. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad. I'm gonna put in here the PDA. Okay, I got excited for nothing. Okay, so if value is none, then we can be sure that, you know, there's no, no account there. Just for fun. If I were to use this one, oh, it's also nothing there. Good. But then let's do something. Let's, because I want to test this. Can I just, as I did here in this test, throw out one, like sign up? Bunch out a transaction, anchor, test, skip deploy. Two failing. <laughs> there we go. Now both of my tests passed. Check that out real quick. So, haha, <laughs> do you see that? And now we have that sext. This just, just created. Okay, 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 cool. Which means that going back to here now, if we now execute that, there we go. Now we have a bunch of data and we know that our account is like twice as big as it should be because I have a bug somewhere that we can also fix while we're here. Hold on. Oh, there, see, that's not 64, but that's eight. That's why it's too big. So this would be a fix that we could do. Cool. So that's working. And on that, we now do some checks. Now that I have it open, I might as well look here. So the verify just gets account info and then state should be one. So data at space eight should be one. Maybe that, that check we wanna do just to see like if the user is actually signed up and not blocked or whatever other state we might have. So the first byte, you know, if you have a look at our account, the first, the state, that should be one because for some reason we set it to one here. There will be more logic on that later, but let's try that as well, such that we can say we can do that. If the result has, <laughs> has result, and maybe let's do that cleaner. If result in result, or maybe build a huge block here. And if there's a value present, so if value is not none, then if there is a data in value, and now finally we can read the data we could also check that the data length is what we expect, but uh, whatever, let's not do that. I don't care. Let's just pretend the data is. So what do we need? Nine bytes. Then base 64, import base 64 and then base fix 64 decode. Okay, we gotcha. What are you now? You are bytes. Okay, cool. Can work with that. If length of let's just print one byte one ha score ah yes yes we read the eighth byte no the ninth byte really and the ninth byte is one that was complicated but okay all good all good we get the byte that we need. And if it's one, then signed up. 
So this one is signed up. Nice. Okay. Wow. Not so easy, but uh, like uh, after like shit tons of time, you get to it. And now my bot essentially just needs to do that. So let's see if my bot can do all of that. Or maybe I should encapsulate it in a dev is signed up for a user ID. The only thing we exchange is that the Discord user ID is the user ID. And only in here we turn true. Cool. Then we load that into our bot for another verify message author ID. That is an int. Cool. Perfect. That's exactly what I need. You are verified. And we add the role else please sign up and then we provide a string and then we provide a link to go sign up but for now this is what we do then let's run the verification bot again and on this card we say verify and then it should tell me i'm not signed up okay cool i'm not signed up that's that's fine because i'm in fact not signed up but what if my test now had my actual user ID. What if we put my actual user ID here, save that and run the tests again, because that's signing me up now. Now I should be signed up. And if I do the same thing again, verify, I'm not signed up, damn it. Where, where is the issue? Oh, I just didn't wait long enough. Cool, I am verified now. Sweet, now I am verified and that should give me my role. In here, there, I would now basically do this, add the role, if I'm actually verified. Nice, well, yeah, I mean, we're really just missing that little part here that we can let the user actually sign a transaction and uh, you know get verified but for that we're gonna have to build some kind of front end for the user to do that and this would like take me too long like can't can't do everything in one evening or at least not in one video so i'm gonna say goodbye here Dark background is better. Oh yes, <laughs> not so sparkly. I really hope that you learned something today, like how to write a Discord bot, because it is fun. We have a bot in our server now, and we're so close. We're so close to getting the verify done. I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow, and I will see you then. So go check out those other videos, go like the video, and subscribe if you haven't already and uh yeah come join my discord and verify soon soon yes yes